Mata. Hi everyone, it's Julia and in today's video we are going to be discussing the weird relationship with Sia and Maddie Ziegler and how it's raised a lot of eyebrows for a very very long time. Before we get into that, I just want to thank y'all so much for 6,000 subscribers. I'm at like 6.6k now, which is literally insane to me. Like I never thought I'd be here at this point. So I just want to thank y'all so much. I'm so happy that I'm building a little community, a little family on YouTube. And so that's awesome. I'm just so grateful. Um, also, new camera, new mic. We, 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 we're stepping up we're stepping up <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoy it and let's get on to today's video so maddie ziegler is a professional dancer that got her start on dance moms when she was 11 years old and sia who is a musical artist loved maddie on dance moms and loved the show in general and so she reached out to maddie via twitter asking if she wanted maddie to appear in her video which we all know to be chandelier and this is basically what popped off the whole Maddie and Sia relationship and just everything we see today. So how did you start working with Sia and at, at what age? Uh, I was 11 years old mm -hmm. and then she was a fan of the show that I used to be on and then she just contacted What's the show you were on? Uh, Dance Bombs right. and um, she just tweeted me from there. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, Sia is an Australian born music artist who had an interest in music at an early age. She was into Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, and she was even in a band called Crisp in the mid 1990s. And that's really where she got her start. Once that band disbanded, she continued to produce music and songwrite throughout the millennium. So Sia garnered mainstream and wide stream attention from her music video Chandelier and her song Chandelier, which was a hit. And this featured then 11 year old Maddie Ziegler, who was dancing in the video. And this is what really propelled Maddie to real like stardom. Like Maddie was not just a reality TV star anymore. She was a real Hollywood star. And so it put Maddie on a new level that honestly happened super quickly. So upon building a relationship with Maddie, Sia felt a strong desire to protect Maddie. So she said, and I quote, as soon as I met Maddie, I felt an extreme desire to protect her. And I think that it was part of my own healing. I felt just an extreme compulsion to protect her. And yet the irony is that I didn't want to be famous. And I threw this child into the spotlight and she would say to me, don't be silly. I was already famous and I wanted to be. So what I wanted to say about this is I think it's super cool that Maddie got propelled to new levels and new heights as that was always her dream. But I always found it interesting how Sia felt the desperate need to protect and rescue Maddie, but she didn't really feel that for the other girls because she was a fan of the show. So I understand if you don't feel connected to everybody else's dancing or you might not feel connected to every other kid. I understand that, but there was a lot of talent within the ALDC Junior Elite competition team. I just found it interesting that Maddie was really her only child that she really 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 like wanted to take it's like oh this child is mine now i need to protect her it's just a little interesting i always thought that even when i started watching dance moms like even when i was watching it back in like 2014 2015 that was always a question i had i'm like huh it's interesting to me how sia felt this with maddie but not i don't know chloe for example or whoever else on the team, uh, even Mackenzie. And I know that Sia and Mackenzie have done, you know, music stuff together, but it seems like Sia really, her focus is on Maddie. And we're going to get more into that as we dive into the video more. So yeah, this just kind of speaks to the unusual relationships that I feel like Maddie has with other adults, but that's another video. Maxi Boss made a great video about that. If you want to watch that, I'm gonna plug her channel right here. Great video on all the weird relationships Maddie seems to have with adults. So she's not accusing anybody of anything. We're not accusing anyone, but it just, it's weird. So yeah. Right, Maddie continued working with Sia on a new video called Elastic Heart, which starred Shia LaBeouf and Maddie in a cage and Shia was in like nude booty shorts and Maddie was in a nude leotard and they were basically wrestling each other in a cage and it was a dirty cage and it caused a lot of controversy. People really thought that it was glorifying pee. It was glorifying just like an older man, a younger girl. It was just very, very inappropriate. So a lot of people had their opinions to say about that. So I'm gonna play that clip here. So I couldn't play the news clip because it got copyrighted. So basically people just tweeted like crazy on how inappropriate the video was. People were really upset and completely pissed off. So that was basically the video. So yeah, YouTube copyright is annoying. So this video really had people questioning Sia and questioning Maddie and what really what where her career was going and what she was doing. And so this was a big, big thing 
I remember at the time not really having an opinion on it. I thought it was weird, but I was just like, Sia seems to be a weirdo anyway. Like I kind of relegated it to Sia being a weirdo. But now with everything I know about Hollywood and just in general, what child stars go through, I just think I can't look at that video and just look at it as art. Like it's not art to me. It is weird. Like, come on, like why? This is so extra. Like they could have conveyed their concept without having to be in a dirty cage. Like anyway, I digress, child, I digress. So I just wanted to add that I understood the concept of Sia's video and the message she was trying to portray. Something about abusive father and her battle with her abusive father. So I totally get it. I just think it could have been presented more tastefully. Maybe not in nude, maybe not in a cage, because we know that society, we relegate a minor and an older man in a setting like that as so I think it would have benefited her if she had been a bit more tasteful about the presentation of of the video so that's what I really meant I still think the presentation was weird that's just my opinion so let's get into the most controversial video music movie whatever the heck you want to call it thing that Sia has done music 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 this released in early 2021 starring maddie ziegler as music who is a nonverbal autistic child who is the sister of a recovering drug addict named zoo uh yeah this video has really caused people to just be completely up in arms and understandably so so a lot of people have panned this movie because it's wrongfully depicted autism a lot of people also feel that it's not fair that the, she had maddie star in this movie who is a neurotypical um child at the time was a child a neurotypical child and they couldn't cast someone who is already autistic that didn't make sense to a lot of people because autistic people and just people with disabilities and other things of the sort already struggle to get roles and so you're gonna put a girl who's who's perfectly not autistic in a film like this. So that really set a lot of people off. So I wanted to shout out one of my subscribers and her name is Hannah Ward. She sent me some really interesting sources and things that of people calling out the movie and the problems of the movie. So one of the sources she showed me was the fact that a lot of people had a huge problem with where music who is maddie's character was being pinned down when she was having a bit of an episode so they were pinning her down in order to calm her down and restrain her and this is really really inappropriate and this is how a lot of autistic children end up die either dying or getting critically injured and so i'm gonna play this TikTok right here do that thing i'm not climbing on top of a small screaming white girl in the middle of this park it's your turn my turn you can do this i'll talk you through it go ahead So what I'm going to say is, I don't know the whole ins and outs of autism, but I have worked with autistic children. I was a developmental specialist for a summer about two years ago, and I was also an intern before that. So I was with this company for about maybe eight months or so. Um, I was really just doing it because I didn't know exactly where I wanted to go within healthcare. And so I was just kind of trying my hand at everything. And I realized that that field's not for me. But basically, when I worked as a developmental specialist, a lot of times when we had kids that would kind of be rowdy or kind of get upset, what we would do is we would usually just kind of clear the room that we're in. We would clear the room and then we would take like a soft exercise mat and just kind of like put it around them. So we would kind of just take like half the room and just spread a mat. So then like here's half the room and then the other half they're they're just blocked off. And so that was how we would kind of calm these kids down or we would talk to them. We would talk them down. We would never pin them down. We would never like do what they did in that film. And I haven't watched music, but just from that clip alone, I'm just like, yeah, no, that is so, so unethical. So that's a big, 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 big thing that a lot of people were very angry about. And I, again, with me working with autistic children, I, I just that was just really disheartening to see because that's not how you handle a situation like that even the black guy in the movie was saying like i'm not gonna go pin little white girl down in the middle of a 
you know, like in the middle of a park, you know, like it's so it's almost like the writers were aware of how wrong and how weird that looked, but they went with it anyway. So again, very, very, very poorly put together film. This has been nominated for Razzies. It's been panned everywhere. So really, really terrible. I don't know how it got nominated for a Golden Globe, but um, that's Hollywood for you. So according to Sia, Maddie was really nervous about doing this movie. She was really scared because she didn't want to offend anybody and she was crying. And Sia, being the kind of savior that she is, kept saying, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let anybody come at you. I'm not going to let anybody criticize you. What we're doing is good. We're doing this for the autistic community. They need this. Oh, Sia. Oh, Sia. She thought she could protect Maddie from this. And again, this movie was panned and Maddie's been facing a lot of heat. But a lot of people have been forgiving of Maddie given the fact that she was young at the time, but people also are still giving her heat because it's like, look, you're an adult now. You should kind of know that this is a bit, it's a bit too much. You know what I'm saying? This, this is too much. This is not right. This isn't a good look, you know? So that's my, my thing is just the fact that it, it seemed like Sia really guilt tripped Maddie and kind of convinced her that everything was going to be okay. And my thing is this, like, does Maddie not have her own agency? If she really felt uncomfortable, she should have been able to leave. Like, she should have been able to say, Sia, I'm sorry, I really don't want to do this. You know what I mean? I just think it's kind of weird how, like, Sia literally, like, convinced Maddie to stay in this despite her crying. Like, it's not like she was just like, uh, I don't know, she's literally sobbing. So that's very, very alarming to me. So Sia also said that she doesn't want to do any projects unless Maddie is involved in them. But I realized it wasn't ableism. I mean, it is ableism. I, I'm, but I realized it wasn't ableism. I mean, it is ableism. I, I'm. I realized it wasn't ableism. I mean, it is ableism. I, I, I guess as well, but it's actually nepotism because I can't do a project without her. I don't want to. I wouldn't make art if it didn't include her. I like how she just admitted that it is ableism. And she's trying to say it's nepotism as if that sounds any better. That's worse. Honey. Honey. Fam. Fam. Wow. So again, this is worrisome to me because of Sia's recent Twitter meltdown. So if you saw when people were coming at her about music, she literally went on a Twitter rampage and just really went off on a lot of people. Very classy, Sia. Very classy. This makes you look extremely valid. <laughs> Bruh. And my thing is this, what if Maddie decides that she does not want to do anything with Sia anymore? What if she decides that she doesn't want to do the, the character, like play, like do the crazy dances? Cause let's be honest here, she's almost 19 years old. It was cute when she was 12, but now as a 19 year old, it'll just look weird. But anyway, I digress. But my thing is this, what if Maddie decides that she doesn't really want to do this anymore? What if she decides that this is not her thing? You know what I'm saying? Is Sia going to be very forgiving of that? Is Sia going to be understanding of that? Or is it going to be a problem? You know, I, again, just based on her behavior on Twitter, I, I can't help but feel like if Maddie tried to get out of working with Sia, I don't know how easy that would be for her. You know, maybe we're just, Maybe we're all just speculating too much. Maybe we're just being dramatic, but it, you know, it, I think it's a logical speculation to make. I also feel like it's possible because Sia has done a lot for Maddie and we're going to get into the things that she's done for Maddie. Um, she protected Maddie from getting on a plane with Harvey Weinstein, which is awesome. But I'm just worried, like, what if Sia tries to hold things like that over Maddie's head? Like, oh, I did this for you. I did that for you. I, you know, and that's the thing that I worry about. Because again, you don't want to do anything else unless it involves Maddie. All your creative drive is tied to one girl. That's a lot. That's a lot of eggs to put in one basket, you know? So let's get into the other weird things that Sia has done for slash said to Maddie. And it's a sizable list. So let's get into it. So first off, Sia bought Maddie her first car for her 16th birthday and it was an Audi. And this raised eyebrows for a lot of people because Maddie's a pretty well-to-do kid. She's been pretty well-to-do her whole life. She's never really had to want for anything, at least financially from our perspective. And her parents are also pretty wealthy. Her stepfather's very wealthy too. So it's kind of interesting to me that Sia felt the need to give her this gift. I just feel like a first car is something that your parents give you or something that you buy for yourself, not some person that is not really related to you. You know what I'm saying? 
Another thing is Sia and Maddie snuggle together per Melissa Ziegler, who is Maddie Ziegler's mother. So Ma uh, Melissa literally said, they're sisters, I love how they snuggle together. And this is another thing I wanna bring up is that if this were a man and a boy or a man and a little girl, do you not, do you guys like see like how much like pitchforks would be like at Sia's doorstep? But because it's a woman and a woman, it's not an issue. So even if like nothing inappropriate is going on, which I don't necessarily believe anything inappropriate just is going on. I just believe that it's unhealthy because the codependency is, is creepy and it's unhealthy. Still, like the fact that this is not being really talked about on a large scale, but Michael Jackson got literally crucified and the FBI investigated the man for 10 years and they found nothing. Um, I not saying I condone all the sleepovers that Michael was having, that, that was a lot, that was weird, but they didn't find anything on the guy. And so I just think it's crazy that this is not happening with Sia, you know? So Maddie's boyfriend, Eddie Benjamin, also quarantined with Sia, and Maddie quarantined with Sia at points as well and has stayed over her house too. I'm just lucky because I have uh, Eddie Benjamin here, who's also quarantined quarantining with me who's like the next Justin Bieber and he's making his next album in one of the units here and um and and so the only person that Sia follows on Instagram is Maddie and so that's another thing it's like Maddie's the only person you see on your feed other things that have been said is Melissa, I think Melissa or Sia, I'll look for the actual um, quote. Okay, so I couldn't find that exact quote. I'm pretty sure Melissa said it though. So if anyone can find it, can you please link it in the comments? Because I know I'm not crazy and I don't want y'all thinking I'm just pulling stuff out of my butt. Like, no, <laughs> I know for sure that I heard that. So link it, please. Thank you. Melissa and Sia kind of share Maddie and that's the thing too that just doesn't make any sense it's like Maddie has a mother Maddie has a father and she has a stepfather she has family and so you would think that Maddie didn't really have anybody in her corner the way Sia is all over her and I get it Sia has helped Maddie a lot in terms of realizing that you know what you need to have more fun you're a kid you know which is great but I just think that where do we draw the line here and that's why I'm saying again for anybody who thinks that I'm reaching or whoever else is reaching ask yourself this question if this were a man and a little boy would this be wouldn't this be an issue like wouldn't you have an issue with it if it was a man and a little boy someone saying i don't want to do art unless it's with her uh, i have to rescue her and another thing too is that sia also paid for maddie's security detail she's paid for 24 hour security details so she always knows where maddie is she, sia's also said that at times when her and Sia have been out together, people mistake Sia for Maddie's mother. And Sia a lot of times will speak for Maddie. So for example, if a fan comes up and Maddie doesn't really feel like talking about it, Sia can tell if Maddie doesn't want to talk or not. So Sia will say, hey, Maddie's not really interested. We're not interested. We're just having family time. Also, I'm fiercely protective of Maddie. Um, uh, I provide her 24 hour security because I feel responsible for um, uh, for her um, ensuing fame, and um, and oh. and even when we're together, if someone comes up, often you know they think they think, they think I'm her mum, and they're like, "Oh, hi, how are you, Maddie's mum? Can you take a picture of us together?" And um, and I'll check, and I can say I can tell from Maddie's face whether she wants to do it or she doesn't, and so. Uh, I either say, oh, actually, no, you know, we're not supposed to be in town or we're not doing photos today or, you know, or actually we're just having some family time or, or, or if I can see that she's like in a laissez-faire mood, um, uh, then I'll say, sure. Um, That's really weird to me because again, like Maddie, even if this happened before Maddie turned 18, when you would go out with her and speak for her and stuff, she's grown enough to be able to say, yeah, I'm not really interested right now, I'm sorry. You know, she has that ability. So that's just my thing is, it just makes me think a lot about Maddie in general because I've watched Dance Moms for a long time and I've kind of liked to look at it almost analytically and psychologically, you know, back when I used to watch it more. And I always, I worry for Maddie just because Maddie always had that people pleaser way about her and that's how she was raised to be she was raised to always be perfect she was raised to always please people and 
I just think it's really alarming that you have somebody that's kind of a helicopter parent when they're not even your parent. So I'm just hoping that things with Maddie and Sia are not as crazy as they seem. I hope that there is boundaries being put in place, especially now that Maddie is an adult. And I'm hoping that all these adults who seem to have an obsession with her over the years, I hope they fall back because we know Abby had no choice but to fall back. So I'm hoping the rest of these people fall back. I just hope that, you know, the best is being done for her. And I hope that she can really take control for herself, given the fact that she's an adult now. So yeah, um, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Let me know if you guys agree with me in thinking that Sia and Maddie's relationship is a bit questionable and, a, and there's no boundaries. Or do you think we're completely reaching and that there's nothing wrong? Do you think that this would raise eyebrows if Sia were a man? So yeah, let me know what y'all think in the comments. I thank y'all for watching this video. I hope you like and also subscribe and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.